Good day everyone, I'm Amy Ann Bisto, your reporter for today's video. So, uh, for our topic for today is all about chapter 4, types of organization. So, here are the topics that I'm going to report. Um, the first is uh, the line type of organization. The second is the functional type of organization. The third is the line and staff type of organization. And the last is the development in organization. So, okay, let's move on to the first topic, which is the line type of organization. So, according to Harappa educa uh, that Education, an or organization where information is disseminated from one person to other based on rank and position follows a line organization structure. So it's, it's a simple no false uh, setup where you know exactly who you're reporting to. Uh, you have to mindful of the levels of the management when you uh, want to communicate or exchange ideas. So one of the most common example of line organization is small businesses with the owner overseeing daily operations so also there are two types of line types of organization so here is the first which is the line of authority or vertical so the line type of business organization is an organization where there is direct flow of authority from the top position to immediately subordinate level the line type of organization is present in all organization types since any organization has a series of authority gradation and form of paradigmal arrangement of its members so the line authority is the simplest of the organization types um, Hence, it is easily understood by its members. So, the line type is usually prevalent in small enterprises. Types of authority relationships are also easily understood. So, and here are the second. Uh, here is the second uh, types, which is the line type uh, necessitates the highest grade of executive and requires workers to be efficient so no other types of organization demand such all-around knowledge and ability so as we stated it uh, pres presupposes um, total competence at the top the foreman of all of one shop has complete charge of the shop and it's directly held responsible for its operations so he must understand how the works should be done. So, uh, he should know how to plan and lay out the work for the, for the whole shop. So, and um, let's explore the pros and the cons of a line organizational structure. So, here are the advantages of line organizations which is uh, a line organizational structure has many advantages may they depend on the type of uh, business and number of employees so here are the first advantage which is the which is the quick decision making so in the hierarchical uh, hierarchical um, structure decision makers uh, don't wait for inputs from other members of uh, of the organizations before making decision, they can really earn personal judgment and take a call. This can be effective when organizations are short on time. So there are fixed responsibilities, so there's little no uh, to no room for error. So dapat jud um dapat jud sakto tanan. And the second advantage is the upholding uh, upholding organizational values so employees are more likely to follow their works uh, culture and values be because it's a simple and effective way to do the business they're fully aware of their responsibility which help them uh, complete their tasks on their own outside of reporting to senior management each tax below to individual employees so listen to kaayon no 
magunit ka sa usa ka uh, responsibility nga dili kay nimo familiar. So we need to adapt, we need to upholding our reason value. So dapat ang atong employees um suit sa ato ang respons uh, responsibilities nga atong ihatag sa atong employees. So that's it. So the third uh, advantage is the builds a rapport. So a aligned organizational structure helps build rapport between senior management and employees. The top-down approach helps streamline communication. So, and the fourth is the directness. Members of the organization uh, understand who they report to the uh, to and what function they are expected to perform. Each man knows his place in the organization. When a person answer for his action is in relation to his obligations, so he knows who is the accountable to. The executive in turn can exact an accounting for the obligation and responsibilities that he imposes when he delegates some of his authority. Alright, let's move on to the five uh, advantage which is the fixed responsibilities uh, passing the bank or trying to lay the blank, uh, blame uh, for poor performance of others is therefore reduced if not eliminated so uh, employees and supervisor at each level are subject to singleness of control so each foreman or supervisor has fully full and direct control of his own men so to the superintendent he only I who he alone is responsible for the result of their work. So the employees and uh, or supervisories uh, are the informant or supervisor is um is the full and direct control of his man. So sila may mag control sa mga employees which is na responsible for that uh, specific work. So and the superintendent is also responsible for the result of the work that they perform so let's move on to the sixth advantage which is the uh, discipline so directness and the fixed uh, responsibility of a line organization naturally lead to stronger discipline so men seem to react more favorably to a single authority than to many others authorities so if a policy is to be changed or an important order is to go out, instructions can be transmitted with discipline down the lane. So, um, so discipline is every, uh, in every aspect, discipline is very important. Why? Because in every responsibility, you don't have, if you don't have discipline, delete na ni mo siya ma-perfect or perform. Because in a, in every aspect, we have a discipline to have um, uh, uh, to manage our um, responsibly, uh, responsibility. So that's it. Kaya wala kung wala mang good kay discipline, warag imuhang imong mga responsibility magkatibu ag warag warag dili siya bitaw siya perfect dili siya ma matarong jud if you don't have discipline. So that's it. We need that discipline, so that's why um, na asya gibutang sa advantage. So, and then let's move on to the next, which is the seventh advantage, which is the simplicity. So, in previous top and previous chapter, rather, we have a simplicity. Why? Because the line relationship is easy to define. The organization plan is simple. Uh, in an ideal line organization there is a minimum a minimum of red tape because each executive is supposed to be competent in his particular sphere and level of authority so competent so how nga no man ay dili dili uh, competent when they say competent dili uh and nasa tong una una ni do chika siya so competent siya jud siya so because simplicity is uh, is one of the advantage because in every competition, dapat simple lang po imuhang mga ay ay muhang mong plano. Because if if your plan is very difficult, dili na siya masunod sa imong employee. Dili na siya masunod because 
sa imo pa lang plan lisod na lisod na asabton unsa na lang pagbuhat so dapat um, simplicity dapat simple ra jud imong plan to have uh, to do that uh, uh, to do that particular spare all right so let's move on to the eighth uh, advantage which is uh, which is the flexibility so by reason of its simple uh, structures the line organization permits quick adjustment to changing situation line organization adaptability makes them particularly effect in an emergency so flexibility so dapat flexible ta para dali ta maka-adapt in every situation in our lives so in our works rather so that's it and the next and the last advantage is the development of all around executives at higher levels of authority so the line organization leads itself to a minimum of bank passing so when a supervi uh, supervisor has been given complete charge of his department he cannot blame someone else if things go wrong the structural arrangement of the line type provides the enterprise with trained men to take over the higher positions big big hated. so develop the all around executive so Diligent siya basta basta makablain if uh, if they have uh, things go wrong because um, every every person has a responsibility so imo man ang responsibility dili ka pwede mang blame sa lain dapat it's your own uh, uh, dapat imo na siyang trabaho and imo na siya i-fix dapat uh, the, uh, uh, dapat they have uh, you must develop the all around executives bisag asa ka ibutang na akay na balaan because the line uh, the line or the organization is directly no positioning is direct on direct og asa ka ibutang makamanage ka so that's it. and also in line uh, line organization it also have this advantage so a top down approach is a rigid trans, uh, structure that can hopper um hamper coordinate the uh, coordination on collaboration as a business organization organization expand uh, the line types can no longer meet certain problems so here is the first disadvantage of the line organization which is the abs absence of e expertise so most of the work done in the line organization structure is routine there is no provision for growth and development employees are um, expected to work at the same task without upskilling or learning about others aspect of the business so just the line organization is um washag na routine na bito siya so wala jud siya expertise not other dili para sa uban nga organization is dili siya para bito nga and na siya uh, na siya expertise ug asya sa as, mura siya mo mo upskilling pa ba mo learn paglain nga mga butang sa sa line mang good is specific lang siya og unsay responsibility nimo adto ra pud ka ibutang so without uh, in a whole year adto ra mura gyapon nimong trabaho walay wala pitoy development walay growth sa imong kaugaling nga ma develop because it's the same walay walay ka walay kalainan mao ra gyapon mo na nahimong routine so and the second, let's move on to the second disadvantage, which is the discourages employee from being a proactive. So, as all the decisions are made by senior management, employees find it difficult to take initiative or step outside their comfort zone. So, they may even start relying on their seniors for orders instead of stepping up the task. So, wala jud siya initiative, period. Because nagsalig naman ta sa nagsalig naman ta sa mga sugo sa ato ang mga higher uh, sa ato mga executive. So that's it. So mo po na yung naka disadvantage. So let's move on to the third disadvantage, which which is the miscommunication. So what gets translated through his uh, through this change of command command may be different from what they uh, what the source intended it's like an organization 
grave uh, grave bind. You don't know what you're going to get because information gets recycled on each level. So miscommunication. So let's move on to the fourth a disadvantage, which is it becomes difficult to secure executives, supervisor, and workers with own with an all around knowledge and with the ability required. So naglibug ng So business operation is the modern world requires or involve technical um, uh, knowledge or various subjects, executives and supervisors must know everything to handle and supervise the same. Only men are unusual ability, broad knowledge and years of and experience and could possibly qualify from such position. Men of this type have always been rare. So let's move on to the fifth. Uh, disadvantage which is that which is the specialization is not taking advance of so method use may be inefficient and may regain uh, remain as much hence uh, costs are up to be high so much time mo much time is also lost in the performance of work requiring special talents so, let's move on to the sixth advantage which is the in a company considerably sized, the executives are up to be overloaded with the duties and responsibilities. Perspective is lost and executive judgment becomes dis distorted when too many people are involved in all aspects of running a company, writes economist R. Angus Deaton. So, and let's move on to the seven disadvantage which is which is uh, the too much uh, reliance is placed on the ch chef and other executives so the class is an example of the man who builds a build a business from scratch but who makes no provision for his uh, successor so when this poor boy made good died the business collapse so the uh, authoritarian uh, autocratic nature of control is online organization is not conducted to the development of property trained successors so, and here are the last um disadvantage which, which is the spirit of teamwork or working together towards a common goal or end is something like lacking in a line organization a strong executive may be able to make everybody its in department to the line but this coordination and control is not lasting to be lasting they should be based on teamwork and voluntary tariness so there is also the danger of like uh, uh layering this incense incense insistence that only communications flow up and down the channels of command. So, wala jud siya, kulang yu siya sa spirit of teamwork. Because, nagyatagan naman tag responsibility. Itagaan naman tag responsible o kung saan buhaton na to. So, wala tay working together. Wala yung teamwork na mahita bo. Because, everyone, each of, uh, each of us na may responsibility sa live organization. So, as, <clears throat> It's important to understood, understand organizational values and culture before you enter the workforce. So finding out your culture fit can help you uh, thrive in the workplace. This way, you'll be self-motivated um, to perform well, get along with your co-workers, and do a good job. So, All right. Let's move on to the second topic, which is the functional type of organization. So, uh, Pre uh, Frederick uh, W. Taylor, the father of scientific management, uh, observed that it's become impossible to find a superman who can know all the, there is to know about a business. Taylor uh, advocated the functional type of organization and work out. A basic organization for the management of a shop so uh, here are the office or planning division divided into first order of work or routine clerk second uh, instruction uh, card clerk and the third 
uh, time and cost clerk and the last is the shop disciplinarian and here are the factory uh, division divided into first gang boss boss uh -huh. first gang boss second speed boss and the third is inspector and the fourth is repair 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 or maintenance for so by that the functionalization is as follows so in functional organization the tax of management or supervised uh, supervision are divided according to functions so the workmen answers to specialists uh, supervise uh, supervisors so for each particular task they uh, they perform so if a shop has 80 workers this 80 laborers would not be divided into eight district units it's reported to only one boss per unit so among the characteristic of the type of organization are first uh, the uh, expert or man trained for a particular kind of works are employed instead of all around me so this, those experts or trained experts or trained men are for instance the chemist the engineer and the superintendent as shown in the organization chart so in figure three there are supervised workers only in the task where they are experts so in the second characteristic is that that uh, in the strict fundament uh, functional type we have the full application of the prin principle of the division of labor both mental and manual so for this division of labor we derive uh, the the advantages of um, increased uh, dexterity on the uh, part of each individual in the organization as well as the as well as of accurate uh, knowledge of manpower requirements so and the last uh, characteristic is the direct flow of authority from the head of the organization down to the workers is done away with an eliminated so by that <clears throat> A typical, uh, a typical factory foreman is accountable to the engineer, chemist, and superintendent for a variety of chemistry, engineering, and production functions. So the foreman can, uh, in contract with uh, take orders from the several functions. So functional foreman as the performance of each particular function or functions. Foreman are responsible to their specialists for all matters relating to the particular function. So, so in functional type, it also have advantages advantages of the um, functional type. Certain advantages are clearly apparent. So first, the specialization is carried to a maximum degree. So this tend to separate the manual and mental function as much as possible. So the disadvantage, uh, the advantage of the principle of specialization earlier referred to are applied. So the second is uh, there is a greater we need for special specialized skills and ability which are easier to secure rather than the all around workers who are more difficult to hire and keep so special skills jud ug unsa imuhang special skill adto jud kay butang og ikaw hilig og manggupit ana man ana naman ibutang ka sa makeup artist artist so adto jud ka sa barber so uh, that's it so the third advantage is the uh, the needed supervisors in addition to being more readily secure are trained for their specialized tasks with relatively little difficulty uh, re little difficulty those pr promoting flexibility in the organization so and the fourth is the simply uh, simplified control hence functions are executive um, effectively so the fifth is the supervision of control or function is distributed to specialists 
who had the full knowledge of their own line of specializations. And the last advantage is in the ideal function organization in vision by Taylor Corporation is promoted and the one man control of the line organization limited. So here and let's move on to this disadvantage of the functional type. So first disadvantage is the discipline tends to break down among the workmen and and at times even more than for men on lower supervisory levels, human nature still insists on clear authorities. When the same workers answers to many supervisors, his discipline becomes lax. So, and the second disadvantage, when discipline is weak, morale is likely to be low. So, and the third is, uh, there is a uh, retarded flow of action on account of the divided control. At times, the same task overlaps into two or more functional areas or supervision. This uh, leads to confusion. Malibog na ka kay daghan naman kag functions area. So, and the next is um. The responsibility is theoretically fixed, but in practice, bank passing becomes the rule. These are difficult to fix the blame for wrong actions. So, each person disclaim responsibilities and point to other as the erring person. So, kani disadvantage yung kaya makapoint naman ka. So, durang wala nang share responsibility. So. Ang foreman ma describe na ad ah, di matu akong sayup ang kwan man ato workers man ato so which is sayup po ni mo kay wala man ni mo gi manage og tarong imong workers so that's it so here also the uh, comparison of line and functional type which is the um the the features which is the discipline uh, control specialization method executive and worker so and the line type is the easily uh, maintain definite uh, non uh, utilize if the efficiency up to continue so uh, demand for workers of all around ability so the function types is weak difficult to coordinate many uh, separation yeah. Functions maxim maximum use, uh, efficient and easily uh, installed. Individual. Um, the function organization of Taylor is a forward step in evaluations of business. Organization competent supervision are more readily found in the functional types of organization than in the line types. So, the scope of duty of the supervision is this directed to the performance of their particular functions so they can be readily trained for the work so that's it it's all that's all about functional uh, organization uh, functional line of organizations okay for by that uh, let's move on to the third topic which is the line and the staff uh, type of organization so the line organization continues to be basic framework of the organizational structure. A third is the uh, organization remains uh, mostly line. The principles earlier mentioned on directness, uh, directness, responsibility, discipline, etc. continue to be applied. However, when the addition of the staff, the pr uh, principles are modified. To allow for expectations, experts or specialists are added as shown in figure 4. So, <clears throat> staff is taken from the word describing the stick or road or pole uh, carried in the hands for support. In, bubbly, uh, in biblical times, a shepherd used a staff where, while going over hilly grounds, pastoring their Ship. So the staff executives perform the specialized function of planning, investigating, giving counsel, and performing special service. So, again, 
According to professors, author G. Adan Anders Anderson of the University of Illinois, uh, there are two different uh, departmental organizations in the line and stop uh, type. So, first is the line departmental organization for doing the actual manufacturing or whatever types of business the company is engaged in. Uh, this group ex exercises the, the faculty of leadership in getting things done. And the second is uh, the group in concerned with making analysis, doing research and investigation, work plans and coordinating information to the made available to the executives. This group is made up uh, primarily of thinkers, specialists, engineers and executive skills in method and procedure. The chef function of the stop is the analysis and point out the route to business uh, efficiency so so the line and stop concept as an improvement over both the line and the functional types offer certain advantages so first is the greater flexibility so flexibility has mentioned as an advantage of the line organization so with the addition of the staff, flexibility is increased. New activities and needed functions can be entered in the, uh, into without describing the basic line structure. So, flexibility. So, the later mga maka kay, which is greater is flexibility. Flexibility. Bisag asa kay butang maka ka because you are flexible enough. So, the second advantage of this um, organization is the greater strength. So, the line uh, departments get the benefit of well-studied advice of the, uh, from experts in a particular field. Line officers are enabled to set with certainly, cer certainty and therefore arrive at stronger decisions. So, uh, advantage in this uh, organization which which is the specialization the a staff executive in not bound by daily operation or time schedule in, in routine so production he can conduct research analysis and system uh, system synthesize uh, synthesize situation and problems and arrives uh, arrive at decision with greater freedom the advantages of specialization are applied without falling into the uh, difficulties of functional organizations. So, specialization. So, let's move on to the uh, fourth and last advantage of this organization, which is uh, the executive training. So, in a line executive who study carefully the advice given by staff specialists, becomes a more qualified executive so he does not lose the essence of command and supervision as in function of functional supervision but he gains a broader uh, perspective than the pure line executive at the hearts of uh, organizations so, executive training so that's it so <clears throat> A line and stop types also have our areas of weaknesses unless, unless lines of communication are kept clear and uh, uncluttered. So workmen may confuse line orders with staff advice. So if a weak organization staff and line officials may not uh, understand their powers and relationships, this this can be avoided if staff experts are expressly warned against exceeding their assigned scope of activities. So that's that's all about a staff and a line and staff or types of. Okay, let's move on to the last topic, which is the development and organization. So, addition of. Uh, assistants. So, assistants are part of staff 
but their increasingly importance in necessitates their particular mention ordinarily they do not do the following work so the first is the uh, such work as the executive delegates to keep the hem executive also uh, inform and to advise him on an any particular activity in uh, this way the span of a uh, knowledge of the executive is bordered in resort it result as well in conserving his time and energy so, and the second uh, addition assistant is the um, the the assistant conducts study and investigations and make uh, recommendation as to the resor result of his studies and investigations so, and the third is he conf confers with person for the executive going over the proposal with them presenting this uh, his superiors uh, views as known to him but leaving question of major importance for the attention of the executive himself so. and the last is that to issue instructions he behalf in behalf and for the executive seeing to it that they reach the proper person and that they are correctly interpret interpreted so that's it and uh, the assistant is an extension of the executive and the virtual extensions of his or her boss so by they uh, by they do not take over the executives line of duties uh, in figure 5 shows the development of the line and staff type by the addition of assistant as well as how they interact with the executive so um, the committee uh, let's move on to this uh, the committee idea in organization so many companies are now added add a network of com uh, committees to the line and staff organization such committees may either be permanent uh, or sometimes referred to as standing committees so, or may be organized to serve only temporary uh, functions a tactful administrator um, an administrator realize the importance of getting people to work together in the solution of their problems so, teamwork so and the next um, committee uh, here are the functions of committees uh, a few the function of committees that may be mentioned as are as follows so, the first is to get the members to work as a team so that's it the function so first function of committees so, the to get the members to work as a team so at the same levels of authority men are often jealous of a distract each other but by placing this men in a community community uh, committee giving them a common problem to work on and by getting them to know one another better than uh, suspicious vanish Teamwork and coordination are enhanced. So that's it. Teamwork. It's very important in community. So the second um, function of community is the uh, is to recognize executive ability and enable training those who later uh, later will comprise top management. So by placing promising young men on the community uh, committee, their executive abilities are burdened and sharp. Uh, there is an open-minded exchange of ideas and direct contact with seasoned executives. So, of course, uh, how you uh, how would you train uh, that uh, that executive if you don't have to share your ideas, your uh, your with uh, if you don't have to open an ideas of that certain. Uh, management so and the third uh, 
The third uh, function is to enable the pooling together of executive abilities and enterprises of the bringing together of some of the best brain of the company. So, what is your brain? A uh, company, for instance, may form a general advisory committee composed of the first, the president or general manager is the chairman. The treasurer is the member, also the factory manager, manager co controller, chef engineering is the member. So, president of the general manager is the top one, is, it is the chairman. So, in many of the large companies, all changer, changes in company policy change in product line are truly, uh, truly dressed out in committee uh, before being acted upon such a committee brings together some of the best brain in the company opinions are exchanged and facts are presented so questions can be uh, decided to best advantage of all concerns so just like mug brainstorming mo of you uh, for example in uh, doing uh, the thesis so you need to uh, brainstorm to have a new uh, to come up a uh, best idea, best, um, best, uh, uh, best uh, research with your team. So that's it. And the fourth function and the last function is uh, to secure the unity of action, action upon which success is any enterprise depend. So. Property utilize a community in an effective tools of management. So quite often, the community becomes adopting a group ground for the making of unpleasant decisions. So community committee works its time consuming and result in unnecessary delays. So there is also a danger that even in instances where a clear course of action is called for there may be compromise so time consuming secure the unity of action with success in any enterprises so na ajud uh, community works in time consuming and result in sad delays so time management dapat na ashay target nga goal time target nga time nga kana nga specific nga works Mahuma na anak nga time. Kana dapat usang oras, duhang oras, anak ra, kana ra nga time ang dapat makonsume anak ra nga specific hours. That's it. So, okay. alright. So, let's move on to the basic principle of committee organization. So, a committee, a committee is like other places of organization vary in terms of needs of given enterprises. Um, however, there are at least four basic principles to be a consider our organizing community so the first is the organizations of a committee should grow out of a need that is recognized by response uh, uh, representatives uh, of a department and the personal affected so the second is the members of the committee should be rep representatives of the function and the per personal concern and this member should represent vari uh, variation in opinion among personnel. So. And the third uh, principle is the duties, authorities, and responsibilities must be clearly defined even if owing uh, to circumstances. They are sub uh, subject to change. So, um, the less uh, basic principle is that organization and operation of a committee should be cooperate development. So that's it. Um, okay, let's move on to the suggestions regarding committees. Uh, for committees to be greater use, the information should be considered carefully. So no definite rules can be given as the number of makeup committees of this would depend upon the problems to be solved the following are the few suggestions as to some of the points to be considered and here is the and here is the first uh, suggestion which is which is the size committee so uh, 
a parliamentary committee should have a suffi sufficient number of members to provide a true discussion, but they should not be lo so large as to be unwidely. In an average case, uh, three to seven members are considered an appropriate members to work to the best advantage. The exact number of members, however, depends upon the individual circumstances of each case. So, just like in uh, in reporting, so in reporting, delete uh, in by groupings in uh, to have a reporting. So, in reporting, uh, in groupings, uh, not applicable that you have a many members. So, it uh, one or two or seven. That's it. It's enough. Seven is the very, uh, very, very large na ng members. So, dapat gamay ra just member para dalit ra bitaw ma deliver ang information. Dalit ra masabten sa uban. Whereas sa daugdagan kayo imo members, um, wala maglisod na ka og pasabot sa uban because daghan na ka apason ng para maka ay daghan kag apason which is kay daghan man mo which whereas sa gamay ra nga dali ra ninyo makap up ang idea dali ra ninyo ma, ma madali ra ninyo og support and then the second uh, suggestion is the selection of members so it is the duty to the, uh, of the chairman to guide tactfully the members of his committee to re uh, reconcile fraction between them and to keep their interests alive so for example in iski Barangay is Kesa and the chairman and the one is that is the Ski chairman dapat sa our members para and the chairman is para dili bitaw kay boring ilahang uh, organization ila committee dili kay boring so dapat ang chairman maggama jud na siya og uh, no uh, selection of members og unsay ganahan siya members dapat ato siya nimo ibutang Dili kay unsay ganahan opposite ilahang uh, iyang position opposite siya ang ganahan. So, wala siya magsinumbagay. Wag mawala ang interest, mawala ang imuhang uh, lively, uh, wal, mawala ang ka-active sa inyong committee. So, that's it. And the third is the frequency and duration of conference conferences. So, it is important to ensure that they are not too long or too long duration consuming too much of time of BOC members. So, dapat na aja siya time. Na aja time management. Na aja um ung unsa nga time dapat dili kayo long and duration sa pag pag an pag god pag other side dia. Ah, I mean, that's it. So, um the fourth is the advantage notice says to community members of work to be considered. So, meetings of the communities are often called because members need time to study the problem and formulate suggestions. At the time of the meeting, two or more members can get together to work out any details or perhaps of the problems that are related particularly to their specific field the those affected a uh, saving of time on the part of the other members of the community. So, that's it. The advance notices to community members over to consider. So, na mobita ng every meeting na ajoy manual. That's it. That's the one of the example of that of this uh, uh, suggestion. So, and the five and last suggestion of this. Uh, development of organization is the work uh, the work of the community is advisory so as a rule the work of the community is advisory and receives favorable acceptance because of its work and values so, occasionally uh, committees may be formed with the power to act the executive committee of the board of directs directors may have power to take action in the absence of the full board. So that's it. The work of the community advisory. So if you if the chairman of your committee is not active, swear us. Maobud ang members. Di po siya active. So whereas sa og active ang imuhang chairman, maingan yung man imong members. Madalaman imong members. So that's it. That's the one of the 
Okay, and that's all for today's video. Okay, again, I'm Amy and Bisto, and thank you for listening. Bye. Have a good day.